She's an 11 year old who simply wants to come home. But just as her American family finished the paperwork, Ukraine was invaded, and now her international adoption is at a standstill. Her mother, Gina Callahan, is here to share the latest in their adoption battle. But first, here's a look at her family's story, a note for privacy reasons we aren't showing the child's face. When you least expect it, you can meet someone who will completely change your life. Back in 2019, uh, in the summer, we hosted a little girl by the name of Svetlana. We didn't know hardly anything about this little girl. She did not speak English. We had about a paragraph of information on her. She showed up in June of 2019, got off the airplane, and we just madly fell in love with her, like, instantaneously. <laughs> we cried sending her back. Um, she cried. Gina's family hosts two more times before deciding to officially make Sveta part of their family. On January 17th of this year, we were approved to adopt two children from Ukraine. It was the same day actually that Russia had evacuated their embassy from Ukraine. And we just thought this is not going in the right direction. And you know, we all know what happened from there. It just everything stopped. The orphanage that houses Sveta as well as another 130 kids is located in Kyiv. War broke out on February 24th. On February 25th, they were on the road. They jumped into buses and made their way to a neighboring country. Shelling, bombing, they saw it all, but thankfully got to safety relatively quickly. At this point, we realize our adoption is, is paused. There's no way to move forward in a war. Wow. I hope we can help. Please welcome to DBL, Gina Callahan. Gina, your story definitely has touched a lot of us. I just want to say, you know, in full transparency, our mothers are friends. Um, and our hearts are with you. And we hope at the end of this interview, there is a call to action. We hope we can help. Absolutely. Because you Thank and you. your family. Yes. You and your family are actually visiting Sveta at her refugee camp right now. So how is she doing? We are, we are. We've been here for about, I think, three days or so. Um, and she's doing okay. She's, she's doing okay. She's a resilient little girl. Um, she has a big smile on her face. She's being fed three times a day, and they're doing all they can to take care of these kids. And we've been really impressed by her orphanage director and all the caretakers who have been completely displaced. Um, but yet have such a heart for these children and are caring for them the best way that they can in the situation they're in. You know, I think a lot of people are gonna resonate with this story, especially those who are looking to expand their families in this way through adoption. There's so many things that have to come together and the fact that you were so close um, is, I know is really, really affecting people. So what does FETA's day to day look like right now? Um, Right now, it, it's rather boring, to be honest. Um, they are in a hostel um, that is gated. They are not really going outside of the gate all that often. Um, this country has been amazing to them as far as allowing them to go to amusement parks and things of that nature. But for the most, most of the days have been um, there hanging out. They have concrete to play on and um, they've had a little bit of education, but you know, they haven't been able to do a ton with them. I think they've had about two hours a day of school and the rest is just kind of free play. So um, I think she's relatively bored. <laughs> Yeah, well, Gina, thank you so much for sharing your story first and foremost. But my question is, is Sveta considered a refugee now? And obviously the question is, does that make this adoption easier in any way or harder? Um, there is no adoption at this point. Um, she is still a ward of the country of Ukraine. So, um, and they have established martial law, which means there's no like working legal um, government at this moment in time. And, and it looks like that's probably been established at least through August. Um, so when, when they're in a state like this, there's just really no possible way to do adoptions. Um, so at this point we are completely on hold as far as the adoption goes. And we, we understand, we've come to understand that now <laughs> that that's not a possibility. 
Um, but one thing that we are asking is to maybe be able to host her um, until the war is completed and Ukraine, Ukraine has regained their footing and adoption can start up again. Um, we've hosted her three times already. Um, and we're just really hopeful that we could get her a traveling visa like she's had three other times right. to just come stay with us and be with us in the interim. That would seem like the logical. absolute most logical and hopefully easiest thing to do, but I know it's not. And I have to ask you this very no. difficult question that I know has plagued you and the other <laughs> uh, potential uh, adopted families. What if Ukraine loses this war with Russia? What will happen to this adoption and the other children? Yeah. Um, well, Russia stopped international adoption in 2013. So there is no international adoption if Russia were to take over. So I think our situation would be pretty dire at that point. Um, we're just really hopeful that that won't be the case. So we're just gonna fight and fight and fight to get her here at least to do a poster um, and go from there. But you know, if Russia takes over, I think our chances are very slim. Well, Gina, the first step is getting the word out. You know, I, I, when I was talking to our producers, we were calling them like the lost children. Like these are children that have families. Like let's find a way to get them to their families. Uh, so DBL Nation, we need your help to bring Sveta and the others to their new homes. You can sign Gina's petition by visiting petition to congress.com. Search Act Now Ukraine Orphans. They need as many signatures as possible to get it recognized. We can do this. We ask you to please join in and help us. Gina, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We hope that we can be in touch and that there is a happy ending. We appreciate you. Thank you, Thank Gina. you so much. Thank you for letting us share our story. Thank you, Gina. Take we'll care. be right back.